everyone, welcome back to Watercolor Wednesday. This is Kendra Krebs, guest artist this week, and I'm bringing you this really fun St. Patty's Day wreath where we are mixing the non-watercolor stamps with the watercolor stamps. So I'm gonna show you how to make this really cute project, and let me first show you what I'm using. So I'm gonna use this shamrock set and the little pot of gold may your may the luck of the irish be yours and then also the four leaf clover here so again that was the shamrock set and then i'm also using the little elves in the watercolor elves set the oops this little guy um this little dot flower in the watercolor mini flower set and also these two little sprigs and this little sprig. So this one is the spring basket and then the other one is the chest of flowers. So those are the stamps I'm gonna be using, so let's get started. First, I'm going to grab a piece of watercolor paper that I have created a circle with, um, or on, and I just used a little ribbon um, holder and I just drew a little circle in pencil and I'm going to start this with the larger images. So anytime you make a wreath using um, some bigger images, you want to do the large images first, and then you want to fill in everything sort of around those images, okay? So first I'm going to use the 969, and this is my little pot of gold. And I don't want to ink all the way down to the base of the pot. I just want to have the ink up here so that I can fill in this lower area with foliage. And I'm just going to stamp that somewhere in there. And then I'm going to stamp in my little pixies that we're going to make into leprechauns. So it's a really easy way to do this. You just don't color the tip of their hat and then you make your own line across to give it sort of this little leprechaun style fedora hat. And I'm gonna color my first little pixie using the 969. And I'm gonna ink him up and place him just kind of right on the edge there. And you can see the top of his hat is missing. That's what we want. And then I'm also going to color the little crawling guy. He's kind of crawling up something here. And I'm going to color him using the 969 without also without inking the hat. And I have these lines here to help me guide his hands. So I put the lines where his hands are so that I know where to put it onto my wreath. And I'm going to have him crawling about here. All right. Now I'm going to put in my four leaf clover and I can put these kind of all around wherever I want to. I prefer to keep them in an odd number, so I'll probably do about seven. So I have 249, and I'm going to ink just this top part. I'm not gonna ink the stem, because I feel like it'll get in the way when I wanna do um, four leaf clovers kinda near each other. So I'm gonna do one here, and maybe I'll do another one kind of right behind it, sort of in there. And the reason, um, I had a question actually that I wanted to address, and it was um, why are why can we use clear stamps on watercolor sometimes? And you know, other times we have to use rubber. So the clear stamps work for watercolor if you're only stamping it one time per inking. So for me, I'm going back in and re-inking every single time. And that's because the clear can't hold on to the ink as well as the rubber can. So you will see when we go to stamp in the foliage, I'm gonna be stamping that several times because those are made in rubber and they can hold the ink so much better than the clear can. And um, that's why we don't make our watercolors in clear. That's why we make them in um, using the rubber. So I hope that makes sense. If you want, um, or if you have more questions on that, just ask us in the comments. I'm happy to answer anything. 
Okay, so now I've got two, four, six, seven, and I'm gonna now move on with my coloring. So I always try to color, when I'm doing things like this, I always try to color the main images first before I start filling in everything with the foliage uh, and the flowers, okay? So I'm gonna take my brush and I'm just going to place 249, 249 on my palette along with a couple other colors. So I'm gonna do um, 177 as well, which is a beautiful olive green. Okay. And then I'm going to add 969, which is our brown we use a lot. All right. So these three colors are going to get me started. And I'm going to take that 249 and just begin to color in my little four leaf clovers. And these don't need to be perfect, like everything else we do. <laughs> it does not have to be perfect. We're just going to start coloring these in on the outer edges. That's kind of where we're focusing the color is kind of out here a little bit. And I am going to add some 177 into these as well, but I do want to get that 249 in first. You can also pull the color out of the lines in here in these if you want to. I can show you how to do that. But do you see how it's pretty light? I know that I'm going to want a darker color on these four leaf clovers. So I'm just going to go straight in and just start coloring using my palette. And you can see how much darker that initial color is when I use my palette as opposed to pulling the color from the edges. If I was doing these in a really, really light green, I would have done that. But I do want them to pack a little bit more of a punch here. Okay, and I'm gonna continue just moving around and adding this color to all of my leaves. Just like so. Okay. And I'm going to take that 177 and just put a little bit of this into my four leaf clovers. And it doesn't have to be all the same. I'm just going to put a little bit. I, I'm not even putting it in every um, leaf. I'm just putting it in some leaves just to give a little bit of differentiation between the greens. Sometimes if you only use one green or one color, it can look a little bit flat. So this gives us a little bit more dimensionality for our images here. And I'm then going to take my 249 detail tip and just put a little dot in the center of these, just like so. Okay, so now we have our four leaf clovers done. And now I'm going to begin to work on my pixies here and making them look like leprechauns. So I'm going to take 249 and I'm going to just draw a little line across the top and almost give him a little fedora looking hat. And you don't need to be afraid of this. If it doesn't turn out perfectly, no one's even going to be looking at the hat. They're going to be looking at all the other beautiful details that you've added into your project. So I just did a line across and then just this little brim, the little, um, the edge of the hat that kind of comes out a little bit and just kept it really simple, okay? So I'm gonna bring out my palette again and we're going to begin to add in some color to our leprechauns. So I'm gonna, of course they're gonna be, have some green in them, right? So I'm going to Add some of this green. Keep in mind you still want to remember your highlights, right? We don't want to forget that our little guys also have highlights and shadows. And I'm going to come over here and we'll color him his little shirt green as well. And then his hat too. And I'm using the 177 um, to color these in. You can use the 249. 
Um, I am going to use the 249 on his undershirt. And you can um, change up the, the order if you want to. You want 249 for the outer shirt, totally fine. Um, if you want them to have totally different colors, absolutely. You have all the control for what colors you use. I'm gonna use the 969 for his pants. And I'm gonna leave, do you see this line of white right here? That's his highlight. So I'm gonna leave his highlight just like so. And then I'm gonna bring in some brown here. And his highlight is gonna be right at the top of his bum right here. And his shadows are gonna to be towards the bottom. Okay, again, I'll bring in just a little bit more brown there. And then he's got a little bit of brown on his shoe. And then I need to color the other guy's shoe. So I'm gonna use the 249 for his little shoes. And so many little details here. I really like the details. It's it's really fun to color these in. You, we do have a smaller brush too, if you prefer a smaller brush. Um, there's a number one on the website you can check out. A lot of people do really like the number one. I do a lot of detail work like this, but um, I find the number four is just fine for little things like this. And if it gets too, too small, then I'll generally just use um, the tip of my marker anyway. Okay, now I'm going to put in just a little bit of color for the skin tone. So I'm going to use the 912 for our Irishman. And this is kind of a pinky, like sandy color. And I'm going to use like the tiniest bit, just a little teeny bit on the ears and the hands. Okay, a little bit here, a little bit on the ears. And then this little guy, you can't see his hair, but you can on this one. And I'm gonna use the 933 for that really bright orange hair. Okay, so I'm going to color the orange hair like so. And we don't need a whole lot. I'm gonna take just a little bit more of that 912 and give him a little cheek. Okay, so our little leprechauns are pretty much done. If I wanna come back in sort of afterwards and get, add some more details in, I absolutely can do that. I'm gonna kind of avoid the sun over here. I apologize if that's distracting. Okay, now I'm going to color in my pot of gold. And I'm gonna use number, where's my little palette here? Okay, I'm gonna use number, um, this is 9.93. And I hope I can get this on, there we go. And I'm just going to very gently color in the top, not even gently, I'm just gonna color right into the top of these coins. And if it's not perfect, that's fine. Whenever I do yellow like this, I, I generally like to pair it with a little bit of orange and I feel that this ties into his hair really nicely as well. So I'm just going to choose a side for the coins and put a little bit of orange on just one side. So for these, I just chose the left side and we'll put a little color there. And then, um, of course, the handle is also going to be yellow. And we'll add a little bit of orange to that as well. I just think that orange is really nice um, to sort of support that yellow. Okay, now I'm going to take my 969 and just put a little bit of it into my pot of gold here. Not gonna spend much time on this because it's it's not a huge part of the um, the wreath here. It's kind of supporting one of the focal points, which is the coins, but it's not itself um, a big part. So I'm just going to kind of add a little bit of color to it and let it kind of fade into the background. 
little bit of water just to sort of blend in the center, but I still have a highlight in there, right? So now I'm going to take my detail tip of that brown and just add a little bit of brown in here to give some shadowing. And it also kind of helps push out that yellow and makes the yellow really pop out. All right. Are we all together now? <laughs> okay, because now we're going to fill in everything around. And this is the really fun part. Um, and, and it's actually all fun. But this is the, the part where you don't have to feel super stressed out about where things go or if it's right or anything like that. And you really shouldn't feel that way at all. But um, when you're doing kind of the main images, you know, there is a little bit of that, you know, pressure to make sure that it's, it's good. And I know that we all feel that pressure um, at times. So I just want you to feel confident that, you know, this part is, um, you don't have to be perfect for somebody to absolutely love it, but this part is actually really fun and you can be really loose with how you do it, okay? So I'm gonna take the sprigs and number 249 and I'm just going to ink those and just start sort of stamping these around and you can see I'm stamping these a bunch of times before I have to re-ink. And I'm gonna zoom us in so I can kind of avoid this sun. <laughs> I'm so happy it's sunny out, but when you're filming, it's kind of like, well. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put these around. And in between the things that I've already stamped, so He's kind of crawling on this area, so I really wanted to make this more sort of horizontal looking so that his weight is pushing down on these little stems, which I think is really cute. It's just kind of an added touch. And I'm gonna put some in here and around my pot of gold. And I'm going to sort of move these over. And because you've drawn that line, this is your guide to use when you're doing these reads. As long as you sort of stay within that main line, you are gonna be just fine. It's gonna be nice and even, it's gonna look nice. And it doesn't really matter what you add, it's still gonna have that wreath effect because you've set your base shape. And we'll put some of that in there. And then I'll put maybe one more over in here. Okay, now I'm going to switch stamps and I'm going to put in some of these little, these other little sprigs that I showed you. These ones are in the uh, little basket set. And I'm just going to put these all around if you want to do this as a single direction, if you want them to all kind of go this way, you can totally do that. That's probably what I'll do. Um, just kind of move these. And I did have a question um, in one of the previous videos about how do I know where to stamp um, the, or how to, st how to, um, no, <laughs> okay, rewind. <laughs> How do I know where I'm stamping because I can't see through the back? How is that? <laughs> so you're gonna take your stamp and just put the point into the corner of your acrylic block like this. And then when you turn it over, that point is like an arrow and it's telling you where you're going. So I'm just gonna ink this and use my little arrow to help me help guide me <laughs> where I'm going. And again, it really just does not matter where you put these. Um, a lot of this is going to be kind of blurred out when we add our water. So just feel free to go to town if you want a really um, thick, sort of bushy wreath like I do. Um, do a lot of these. If you want something more simple, just do less. 
And you could do like some branches in here if you want, whatever. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit. My goodness, the sun. And I'm going to take now my little dot, my little dots, and I'm gonna use number 98, which is kind of a earthy color. And it's got a little bit of brown in it, which I love. So I'm just gonna put these sort of around because I think they add something kind of special and different to this. Okay, so just choose where you wanna go. You can do this in quadrants. We have videos on that, how to make your wreath, you know, the exact same all the way around. Um, I like things to be asymmetrical. I like when it's not totally perfect because in general, things aren't, you know, wreaths are a little bit asymmetrical naturally. So I would prefer to kind of stick with that. I don't mind if it's a little bit wonky. Um, I think it adds character and it's really fun. I didn't used to be that way. I used to want everything like just so perfectly. And you know, now, now I, I um, kind of prefer when things have a little bit more character. Okay, now I'm going to take my brush and I am going to add my water to these little guys. And I'm going to just dab these flower or these foliage and I'm gonna do it by color. So I'm gonna start with the 292 and these, it's kind of that more piney green color. So anything that's kind of that piney green I'm going to add my water to. It doesn't need to be perfect. I can accidentally touch other sprigs and things and be just fine. Okay. And then I'm going to do that 171, which is more of that olive green, which are gonna be these little guys. And we're just going to move around. Anything that's that olive green, I'm going to touch with my brush. And then I'll come into the little, little dots here. And we'll get those dabbed as well. How fun is this? Okay, and that's pretty much it. I'm gonna let this dry just a little bit before I um, before I erase that little line underneath. And because um, you can just very, very, very lightly see it under there. If you were to forget, it wouldn't be a big deal. Um, but to erase that kind of takes away the that guide sort of, which is kind of nice. So while that's drying, I'll stamp in my sentiment here. So this is, may the luck of the Irish be yours. And I'm going to use number 249 for this. And I'm just going to ink that whole thing, including the exclamation at the end. And I'm going to take that and just place it right in the center. So cute. And don't worry about if it's not totally perfect. You can always take your, your little marker and put in the areas that are maybe a little bit lighter. So no worries on that. And then make sure you sign your name. And I'll just sign mine right down here. Always sign your work. And I'll generally put the year as well. So I hope that the sun didn't ruin this project for you. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you learned a thing or two and you had fun. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to subscribe and join us every Wednesday for Watercolor Wednesday. Um, if you want to check out more projects, you can check out our, our, our um, Instagram um, feed and there's a ton of inspiration on there as well. I also wanted to show you another card that I made using this set. 
And this is Shamrocks and Shenanigans for All. This one's a little bit more um, heavy on the Shamrock set, which is really, really fun. Um, and then I did fewer of the foliage around it. But you can, with just, you know, a couple sets of stamps, you can do these fun little wreaths. If you liked this kind of project, let me know in the comments because I can do wreaths all day and night every single day. So if you love wreaths, um, we can be best friends because wreaths are like my favorite thing to do ever. And if you want to see more of them, please let me know. And I'm going to show you really quick how to erase this because you don't have to be careful as long as your image is dry. That's kind of the biggest thing. You will ruin your project if you don't wait for it to dry. Okay, everyone, that is it. Let me know if you liked it, and I will see you next time. Bye!